I cannot call it that. Cannot call it that. Can you hear me now? Testing the sound now. Do you hear me? Yes. Perfect. Yes, yes. Está saliendo, Cecilia. Sí, si se te ve todo, ya anda que no hay una pregunta. Entonces me da más oscura, pues. ¿Ya? ¿Por qué no escuchamos nada? yourself it's your power it's time to roll up our sleeves be yourself that's your power all about gender equality together we can be yourself it's your power Universal, popular, inclusive, film harm. Uh, for me, table tennis and inclusion are hand in hand. Um, this is a sport that has no barriers to entry. Anybody can play, and that's how it should be. We should get as many different groups of people involved as possible. Our community, togetherness. Together, in Siemen. Together. Universal, popular, inclusive, film empowerment. Universal, popular, inclusive, empowerment. Join us on April the 6th for World Table Tennis Day. Join the World Table Tennis Day. Join the World Table Tennis Day. <laughs> Join the World Table Tennis Day. Blijf yourself, dat is je kracht. Get people into table tennis, guys. Inclusivity. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. <laughs> again, again. You, uh, fem power All right. Fem, 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 <laughs> fem, 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 like feminist.
Be yourself. It's your power. It's time to roll up our sleeves. Be yourself. That's your power. Juntos podemos. All about gender equality. Together we can. Woman great. Be yourself. It's your power. Juntos podemos. Universal, popular, inclusive, fame, harm. Uh, for me, table tennis and inclusion are hand in hand. Um, this is a sport that has no barriers to entry. Anybody can play, and that's how it should be. We should get as many different groups of people involved as possible. It's about community, togetherness. Together, in Siemen. Universal, popular, inclusive, fame, empowerment. Universal, popular, inclusive, fan empowerment. Join us on April the 6th for World Table Tennis Day. Join the World Table Tennis Day. Join the World Table Tennis Day. <laughs> Join the World Table Tennis Day. Blijf yourself, dat is je kracht. Get people into table tennis, guys. Inclusivity. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. <laughs> again, again. You, uh, fan power All right. Fan, 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 like feminist. from stigma, stereotypes, and violence. A future that's sustainable, peaceful, with equal rights and opportunities for all. To get us there, the world needs women at every table where decisions are being made. With these words from the United Nations Women and how they commemorate International Day, Women's Day, I would like to welcome you to this online conference about equal uh, gender equality and female empowerment in table tennis. My name is Wiebke Schaeffler. I'm head of operations within the ITTF Foundation. This conference has been organized by the ITTF High Performance and Development Department together with ITTF Foundation. The conference is part of ITTF Group's Women's Month. This month we commemorate women, we commemorate girls and women in table tennis with a series of activities we do together with World Table Tennis, with ITTF High Performance and Development and with the ITTF Foundation. Today at the World Table Tennis Contender in Doha, only female matches are being played. There are several communication campaigns we are doing together with HPD. You can see them all here in the list. You will find them also on our social media, so I won't repeat. Here, now, before we start, I would like to give you a very small introduction into Blue 
Jeans. I hope you can all see my screen now. I think most of us, we are very used to, uh, to this new tool of online conferencing at the moment. Just um, particular, uh, uh, particularity of blue jeans we have here at the right side, you have several chat functions. You have the event chat where you can pose all your questions and they are publicly seen. And our moderators, my colleagues in the background, are able to answer them live. You have a moderator's chat where you can ask any question you would directly ask to any of our moderators today. This, these questions won't be seen. And then last but not least, you have a Q&A section where you can post your questions you want to, uh, to ask to the panelists. And we in the background will filter and try to summarize them. If there are a lot of um, questions here, you can also vote on the question and um, so that we can know what's, what are the most pressing questions we would like to get answered by one of our panelists today. And there is also a poll function within um, Blue Jeans. We will do different polls during our panel discussion today. I will go uh, guide you through this process. So, back to the conference. The conference will take part in two parts. We have the first part, which is um, more problem oriented. And we have a second part where we would like to find solutions together with our panelists. I'd like to present our panelists today. I hope you can see my screen now. You can, great. So we have today here, we have IOC member and IOC Women in Sports Commission member, President of the International Table Tennis Federation for Equestrian Sports, Ingmar De Vos. We have IPC Governing Board Member and Agitas Foundation President, IPC Women in Sport Committee Chair and IPC IOC Women in Sport Commission Member, Rita van Riel. We have ITTF Executive Vice President of Finance and Board of Trustees Chairs of the ITTF Foundation, Petra Sterling. We have the founder of the NGO, Funke Oschaneike Foundation and six times Olympic table tennis player, Funke Oschaneike. And we have the founder of the NGO, sorry, that's wrong here. It's not the NGO, it's called Monika Liao Foundation. And she has a program, Impactando Vidas, and she's one time Olympic table tennis player too. So thank you very much for our, to all our panelists for joining us today. And here it's really an honor for us to have you here. Thank you. I'd like now uh, to give now the words to Ms. Hajira Kaji. Hajira Kaji is our ITTF Gender Commissioner to welcome you officially, officially in this conference. Ajira, the floor is yours. Now, thank you, Wipke. Uh, good afternoon to all the panelists. Igma the Foss from the IUC, IPC Rita van Dre, Petra Soling. I will welcome her as the ITTF Executive Vice President, but also Trustee of the Foundation, Monica Liao and Funke, my sister from Nigeria. Welcome to the ITTF Foundation and ITTF Gender Equality and Femme Empowerment Conference. As the Gender Commissioner, the ITTF Gender Commissioner, it is my honor to welcome all of you. I am Hajira Kaji from South Africa. I am the ITTF Gender Commissioner. I also serve on the Africa Table Tennis Federation Executive Committee. I'm also the President of the African Union uh, Region 5. Today, as we celebrate, the world is celebrating International Women's Day for an equal future in a COVID-19 world. Sadly, much of the progress achieved thus far has been a setback with COVID-19. This is particularly the case globally. Table tennis is no exception. Gender equality has been in the forefront of the ITTF agenda. We have achieved equal prize money, leveling the playing fields with regards to coaches and technical officials, 
players at tables of all ages is at 44 percent. Recently, the ITTF appointed the tribunal. Out of the seven members, we have three women, which is a great achievement. However, our biggest challenge is representation of women leaders at national, continental, and international level, as well as the ITTF commissions, committees, but this applies from the International uh, Federation right down to country level. My message is that as leaders, we have a collective responsibility to ensure that generations beyond us must understand honesty and chase for the truth. What is that truth? What are the facts of our society with regards to gender equal equality? Where will they be heading as a collective humanity? But, and in particular, the space that they will find themselves in and coexisting in that what we call the world. So we have a huge responsibility to ensure generations beyond us understands this huge responsibility. As women, we want to be free of discrimination in all, at all levels. Climbing the ladder in the sports world is very difficult, especially in developing countries. Now more than ever, we need to listen, to hear from one another, to rebuild those bonds because trust shows that we believe in the good of each other. And it becomes more and more important and critical that we do that post-COVID-19. Hopefully it will be post-COVID-19 and we return to some normality. Thank you to all of you and I'm looking forward to a fruitful discussion. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Hajira. You have spoken very true words, and I think um, it's in our all responsibility to educate future generations about um, gender equality and gender equality in sport and in table tennis. Um, coming back to the topic of our and using the words from Hajira to the topic of our conference, uh, all these activities we are currently organizing in the ITTF group during the month of March are leading up to April 6. April 6 is World Table Tennis Day, and this time, this year, we focus on gender equity and gender equality within table tennis. So we really would like to invite all of you to use this month and to use our several communication campaigns we have set up to celebrate women and girls in table tennis and to idly include more women and girls into our beautiful sport. Thank you very much. We would like to start our conference, our discussion with a small poll. This is an open poll. You have to leave um, blue jeans for a small while. I hope you can see my screen. When you go to the chat functions, you will see a link posted by one of my colleagues. Please click on, uh, click on the link and it will pop up a new tab in your window and there we like to ask you the following questions. In which areas do you see the greatest gender inequality in sports or table tennis? Please take your time now and answer in which areas you see the greatest gender inequality in table tennis or sports. Please name maximum three and we will see your live results here in on the screen. While you type in your, uh, your answers, um, I'd like to come back a little bit to the topic of equality and how we see equality. Um, because it's of course we don't want to be all equal. We are not equal, but we want to have equal opportunities for all and we want to create equal opportunities for all. I think a very good example at this conference for uh, today, which has created equal opportunities for all, because no matter who you are, no matter where you are, you can take part in this conference. Uh, you only need an access to a smartphone or to a laptop 
and you can take part. I think this is um, a good example on how equal opportunities can be created. And of course, it would have been great to sit all together in one room today and discuss personally, but this new era brings us a lot of benefits too. So let's see. The greatest gender inequality we see in media representation, in prize money, in coaching, in leadership. Uh, leadership, Hajira mentioned it before, in opportunities, para athletes, uh, in promotion, participants. Thank you. That's very nice. Please keep answering. The poll will be open uh, a little bit more while we start our discussion today. And this poll will really help us at the end to work with your answers and to see where we have to focus our future work. So, coming to our panelists now, I'd like to speak a little bit about gender balance to start this conversation. Ingmar, thank you again for joining. It's a, I, we all know it's a hard time at the moment for equestrian sports within the, with the disease outbreak. So I'm really glad that you could make it to this conference today and um, that you could take your time to be here talking in your position of an UN gender champion and as the IOC Women in Sports Commission member, what do you think about the current situation of the gender balance in sport? Thank you very much, Vipki. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. Uh, so first of all, uh, I, I would like to thank you for, for this invitation and it's really uh, an honor uh, to be in your conference. And let's not forget, uh, first of all, I would uh, wish all of you uh, a happy International Women's Day because in the end it's a celebration today. I also would like to thank Hajira for her very wise words. I can only say that I fully agree with the points that she made. Now, when it comes to gender balance in sport, uh, I, I'm coming from equestrian sport, so it's uh, very difficult for me to speak about table tennis. But uh, gender balance and the effect of gender bias, of course, affects every part of society uh, and the sphere of life as we know it, uh, education, cultural norms, perception, work, sport, media, the language we use, it's part of everything we are and everything what we do. And especially in sport, uh, it's about, uh, we saw already some of, of these points made in the poll, it's access to sport and the opportunity to engage in sport. It's about equality in the sporting arena when it comes to visibility, media, promotion, and appreciation also in terms of financial revenues, prize money. And then, of course, there is also the governance of the sport and the gender balance at the level of the decision-making bodies. At most levels, uh, I think it's fair, fair to say uh, that the imbalance has generally always favored the man, and the priority and the focus has always been mainly on men. However, I believe that uh, there is a shift that is happening across the sporting world. Uh, this shift is not uniform uh, across all sports. It's not uniform across all countries and regions. And it's not uniform or necessarily balanced between what we are seeing with the athletes in the field and the governance structures. But I believe change is happening. And over the last decade, we have seen a growing awareness uh, that something needs to be done. Uh, we have a huge responsibility to drive that bigger shift in perception and to be the change makers by raising awareness, by leading by example, and by setting up the structures and an environment that will break down the barriers and ensure gender balance at every level. I do believe there is a collective and growing awareness around gender inequality in sport and I believe that as a sporting community, we are proactively tackling the issues. But like I said, it's not linear and we are not all in the same place, but collectively, I believe we are influencing each other in a very positive way. The fact that we are here talking about it and that many other organizations and associations are coming together today around this issue is really significant. And it's interesting when I look at my sport, the equestrian sport, 
which as you know is unique as men and women are competing together against each other in the same competitions. But many people often think that equestrian sport does not have this issue or has never had to address gender equality in the field of play. But we have and uh, we continue to address it. You know, when equestrian sport first joined the Olympic program, and that's many years ago, there were no women allowed. And it took many years and a lot of lobbying from certain groups in order to allow women to compete alongside men at, for instance, Olympic Games. And when they were first permitted, and that was in 1952, it was only for dressage, and it took uh, another four years for jumping, and then it was not until 1964 that women were permitted to compete in eventing. But then, of course, they still had to be selected and they still needed to have the same opportunities to climb the ladder to get there. There was a lot of resistance uh, in the field of play. Men did not want to allow women to compete alongside them, and they said they were not capable of it. They said it was too demanding for women, or maybe that's what they told themselves. Today, I would say there is no gender bias in the field of play in our sport, Men and women compete against each other without prejudice or bias. And you know, in fact, all our reigning world champions in, in the Olympic disciplines, they are, at this moment, they are all women. But there is no doubt that access to sport for women in certain regions still remains a challenge. And we need to continue promoting gender balance and showcasing role models and push that narrative in order to help break down those barriers. And again, we have sensed progress. I can give you many examples. I can give you the example of Dalma Rushdie, the first female athlete from Saudi Arabia to take place, uh, to take part in, in an Olympic uh, event. Uh, and that was in the question at the Youth Olympic Games in 2010. But also, and it was already mentioned before, from a governance perspective, we have also a lot to achieve and a lot to improve. As a sport, we have a very large female membership in equestrian. We have many females working in the administration of our sport, but at the very top, there are more men than women. Why and how uh, can we drive change is a key priority for us, and we have added a number of diversity protocols to our governance processes. We also proactively communicate and promote diversity within our membership and our national federations to encourage them to place gender balance at the forefront of their priorities. And it's not just for the forum or to match up the numbers. I really strongly believe that diversity in management is also leading to better governance and better decision making. So it's not about ticking boxes. It's about accepting diversity as our strength. And I think I spoke already long enough for what should be a short introduction, but uh, I, will, uh, I will stop here for a moment. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ingmar. Yes, you exceeded the three minutes we agreed before, but it's all good because it was really interesting what you have to say. And we really appreciate you, the insight of equestrian sports too. Um, I found it very interesting when you said that um, that there is still an imbalance, uh, gender imbalance, and particularly, of course, and within the leaderships. But you said also that we have to lead by example, and this is very aligned with what Hajira said at the beginning. Um, we have to lead by example, and we have to educate future generations. That we have to prepare the scenario for future gen generations to have more gender equality. So I'd like to come now to Monica. Monica, you are working on the field, your program Impact, Impactando Vidas, in English it's Impacting Lives, empowers kids and youth to play table tennis. How do you see gender balance at the grassroots level? I mean, you are working with our future leaders maybe. Is there a gender balance issue within the grassroots level where you, where you are active? Monica, we can't hear you at the moment. Can somebody put Monica's micro on, please? 
Hello. Yes, Hello. now we can hear you. hear you. Can you please start again? <laughs> yes. Uh, first of all, I'm honored and thankful for being invited to be part of this panel on this special day for all women in the world, which we celebrate and talk about gender equality and empowerment of women and share with you my, my humble love to the sport of table tennis and how I was able to utilize this sport as a tool to help vulnerable, vulnerable and children in need in my country of Peru. I think, I really think that through history, a society has been generating more rights awareness and the opportunity women and men deserve for the simple reason that we are all human beings with dreams and purpose in lives. Um, women are currently playing a very important role in society towards, uh, thanks to our courage and passion towards our ideals. Uh, even though gender equality within sports for women is getting better, I think that the biggest frustration for women in the inequality is of pay between gender. Women get paid much less, and that is a barrier that should be broken, and pay should be the same. So this is my opinion about inequality. Thank you very much, Monica. Can you please briefly explain how is it within your project? Do you have the same amount of girls as at boys in your programs, Impactando Vidas, or is there an imbalance too? How is it um, with our future generation? Just briefly. Yes, well, actually, we, we have 150,000 children in the program. Uh, uh, approximately 40, 48 months of an implementation, 400 concrete table tennis equipment, more than 100 public schools where table tennis is implemented uh, in more than 14 regions in Peru. So, um, um, considering the year uh, uh, the program was initiated as a baseline according to the National Institute of Statistics on Information from the Ministry of Education and the Student Census, 46.4% of primary school students had adequate reading comprehension, while only 34.1% achieved a satisfactory level in mathematical reasoning, showing why Peru's, Peru's education level is substandard. 3.5% million students in Peru attend primary school and 2.6 million only of these attend public school. So, uh, of course, we have a, a very considerable attention deficit and low speed. Uh, so, uh, our program is attending uh, many aspects such as reading comprehension, uh, they have improved attention and concentration and mathematically reasoning, motivation for learning, uh, physical and psychomotor development, uh, creativity and initiative, interaction with, with uh, their friends, uh, major better coordination and self-esteem. So um, I guess that being an Olympian, table tennis women, means uh, having developed through the years discipline, hard working, responsibility, time management. So it is not easy to lead a non-profit table tennis social project. No matter if you're a man or a woman, uh, it is really a titanic job. Impactando vidas in Spanish or impacting lives in, in English was born in April 2016. During my health recovery, I had to undergo uh, through a cancer surgery in December 2015. We had the uh, initial purpose of expanding um, table tennis all around the country with its massive and recreational practice building concrete tables with fixed uh, stainless steel nets in the courtyards of public schools. 
in Peru, providing all the table tennis equipment, such as rackets, balls, uh, coaches, um, in schools, and to be practiced during PE, physical education classes, in addition to volleyball, basketball, soccer, athletics. I remember my, wa Thank my you mom. Thank very much, and I Monica. I don't yes. really want to interrupt you, but time is running. So right, if you can right, try right. to finish the sentence and we go on. Yes, yes. Este, I remember my mom, this is like my, my last uh, paragraph, warning me about uh, this satanic job and telling me if this is good for you and for other people, the doors will open one by one. And that is how uh, little by little sponsors will, who believe in the power of table tennis and in the power of sports started to sign our cooperation agreements. We started to sign with mining, petroleum, gas, electricity companies as well. Thank you That's very it. much, Monica. This is really an inspiring project, I think, and um, for sure our participants will be happy to follow up after the conference with you or to check your social media to learn more about the project. Coming back to, uh, to the gender balance in sports, I'd like to address now and to ask you, Rita, about um, gender balance. Is it the same situation? Um, do you have the same problems of gender imbalance within mainly the leadership, but also within um, participants? Uh, is there a gender problem in para sports too? talking about participation possibilities and thinking about the challenge to create equal opportunities for para players. Can you please explain briefly the gender balance situation in para sports? We can't hear you at the moment, Rita. Can you hear me no, now? we can't. Yes, we can. Is it that okay? Okay, yes, yes, so we can. Thank you. Thank you for being a part of this interesting panel. And we can all hear and see the, the, the energy in the room, if I might, uh, may call it like this. And yes, uh, I can confirm we have the same challenges in para sport. And, and as Ingmar already said, we should embrace the diversity as a strength. And in our if I may say, our world, it's uh, even female strength and also, you know, the, the para-athletes. Uh, so we have sometimes a double challenge, I might call it. So, um, yes, it's, it's difficult, but we also recognize that there are so many female leaders also in the para-world who are really doing a great job, but we should, I would say, we should do we should use them better in recognizing their strength. And the women do such a good job in many areas, but not in the final step to the leadership position. So it's very difficult to change that. And of course, we can have all kinds of procedures and things on paper, but in the end, I believe we really have to do it. We really have to encourage each other to step up and, and it's um, I believe we sometimes quota, things like that will help, but in the end we should do more uh, to support women to make that final step. But that's, I think, the second part of our discussion. To, it to is, it is. And but yes, we have the challenges as well. But what do you think are the greatest barrier of a gender balance in sport? I mean, it sounded very encouraging at the moment, uh, at the beginning, that you said um, that in para sports, of course, you have the double challenge. Um, but as we see diversity as a strength, um, there is a female empowerment within para sports, but within the leadership, it's again the same. Why do you see where are the greatest barrier of gender balance in sport, Rita? I think that. Of course, we need men to support that, that those steps. But I also believe we, as women, should be should have more courage to step up and show who we are, what we can, what we can do. I think most, a lot of women are maybe too, how do you say it, modest, to think, oh yeah, but I will do my job, and and it's not so important. I think we should step up and show what we can do and also show that if you have a diverse board or you have a diverse 
organization, you take much better uh, decisions in the end because it's, it's, uh, the discussions will be different, decisions will be different. So, so I think it's really important that we as women step up and don't be too shy to do that. Um, so yeah, that's I think is the most important thing to say. Thank you very much, Rita. So we have to be less modest and we have to shout loud. Uh, our next panelist, um, Funke Oshanaike, she is a very strong woman, I think, and she experienced a lot of different situations in her life. I'd like to tell you a very small story about her. In 2018, no female Nigerian table tennis player was sent to the Gold Coast Commonwealth Games in Australia. Funke, at that time, only three years ago, you criticized openly the Nigerian Table Tennis Association for dropping out their female players from the Commonwealth Games. What was the barrier here? Why were no women sent to the Games? And how were the reactions to your criticism? We can't, we still can't hear you, Funke. <laughs> I'm so, you can you are, hear me now? I'm so yes, sorry. <laughs> Hello everybody, thanks for having me and happy International Women's Day. Um, oh my God, you're taking me back to 2018. It was so a terrible year for me because I asked them what happened, why stopping the women from going and we were told that uh, we were not sure of winning a medal. So that was why we were dropped. I was shocked. Because if we have to think about table tennis, you know, we know that the Asians are very, very good in table tennis. So most of the time when we go for competition, sometimes you know who's going to get this gold, silver or bronze, sometimes. But you cannot say because maybe the Chinese are going to get the gold or whatever, or the other country will not go, you know. The most important thing in sport is actually representing your country. You might be lucky to win and you might be you might be unlucky and you lose, but go and represent your country. Let the world know that, you know, in this country, Nigeria or in Germany, they play table tennis and they love. But unfortunately, you know, the board member that time said we were not good enough, we might not win medal. But we we can actually win medal, but we were dropped. I was really angry, but because Funke is a known name in Nigeria, the matter was taken up by um, House of Representatives in Nigeria, and that really hurt them so much. So to the extent that some of them, you know, they were against me, that why did I have to go out? Why did I have to put them out like that? I said, no, I didn't do that. The thing is that they know me, they know my name, and somebody, they were all ready to fight for me. I don't really need to talk to anybody before they could be able to take my case up. So, uh, but because of that, they were against me. You know what they did to me? That is why this female, to be female, sometimes it's really, really hard. I went to Nigeria because I have a foundation. I went to Nigeria to, you know, for my normal, you know, clinic, you know, to give out to, to the less privileged in Nigeria. And the next thing I was told is that they were not going to support me. Some of them said they were not going to support me. And what was so painful for me was that they had to WhatsApp, you know, some of these children that they should not come to my foundation. They should not show up, you know, to come and get what I have for them. You know, these children, they love me so much because I'm like a mother to all of them. They all call me mommy, you know. So they came. They couldn't stop because they wanted to see me. They came for the found, for my foundation. I said, why don't you want to play? Why don't you want to come to my clinic? And they all had to show me the WhatsApp message. Somebody sent to them that if they should come to, my, to the clinic or they should come around me, they were going to be banned. <laughs> Oh my God, I cry like a baby. Thank God I had a good manager. But one thing about me is that I still know how to protect people because if I have to look up, up, around table tennis, I still see them like my family. So everywhere I was going, anytime I go for interview, my manager told me, Funke, don't tell them, don't let the world know how they are treating you. Just be strong, be focused, be focused on what you are in Nigeria to do. Don't worry. People are going to help you out. I was actually doing interview. I wanted to say a lot of things because I was hurt, you know, but I just couldn't, you know. I couldn't because if I say a lot of things, 
it is really going to bring them more down. And I don't want to do that. I want a situation whereby we're going to talk as a family, you know, we talk, sit down, but they were doing more. You know why? Because of that name, Funkar Shonaike, because of the fact that she's a female, because of the fact that she's very, very powerful. So I really know how it is when some people want to bring you down because you are, you are a female. You, like I'm talking right now, I still have a lot of people that I have under my foundation that they call me every day of sexual harassment, a lot of things. I wish I can get power to do more, you know, but I know oh God will help me as a woman. To be a woman in sport, wow, you must be very, very, very strong. And that's exactly what I'm trying to be. Thank you very much, Funke. I think we all see you as a very, very strong woman who is shouting out <laughs> loud as it, what Rita said before, you are strong and you shout. Petra, I'd like to come to you now, um, back again to our executive uh, level. We have heard before in Hajira's speech that only 11% of all ITTF officials are female. You are one of them. You are the only woman in ITTF's executive committee, which has 11 members. Why do you think there is still a lack of female presence in decision-making positions? And why do you think it is the most difficult area to achieve equality in gender equality, of course? Thank you very much, Vipke, and thank you for these questions. I hope you all hear me good now. I would also like yes, to take do. actually the, the floor also to thank you, uh, the ITF Foundation and ITF uh, HPD for organizing this excellent uh, discussion today. And, and I'm very proud actually to be asked to be part of the panel. But back to the questions. If we compare 20 years back, awareness is now there, but changes take time, too long time. So the difference now from before is awareness. But to speed up the changes, I believe we need much stronger follow-ups and we also need more competence. And I'm not talking about more competence among women. This is something we often hear. I'm talking about more competence in regards to all the benefits gender equality brings. I think it was said already by uh, Ingmar and Rita as well. I'm talking about diversity. The solution is not to create women's working groups with women or even panel discussions with and for women, but instead an open debate among men and women on how to go from awareness to change and a gender equal society where the word gender does not exist. We don't need to use that any longer. We will go on solutions later on and hopefully we will, we will come to that. But we also know, as Vipke said, that it is the most difficult area to achieve gender equality on the, on the higher level of, of positions. And uh, we can see that there is a bigger difference in, for example, salary between men and women if you come to higher position. This is an interesting thing to study. And I believe that changes at the top require more knowledge, will and conscious actions to take. So that is my comment on the first uh, part, Vipja. Thank you. Thank you very much, Petra. So we have to shout loud and we have to speed up the process, but not alone, not the women alone. We have to be all together, men and women. Thank you very much for your very, uh, very much for your valuable opinion, Petra. Ingmar, coming back to you, I'm pretty sure that our audience would like to hear your opinion on this topic too. You are a man, you are working in gender equality. What is your personal motivation behind? Why do you work in gender equality? And why do you think that females are still underrepresented in decision-making positions? Well, thank you for the question. And, and uh, well, the reason why I, uh, I, I'm very interested in, uh, in working in this field is because I really believe uh, women deserve uh, to to be in these positions. I mean, uh, it's a bit strange for me sometimes because my international federations, my, my the three predecessors I had, they were all three very strong women. And uh, it's a pity to see that there are so very few women in top positions like in international federations, uh, be it as a president, be it as a secretary general. And when I was elected as a man uh, as president of 
of my federation, immediately, automatically, it was probably even instinct, uh, I, I choose a, a female secretary general because I believe it's really important and it contributes a lot to the decision-making process. I mean, uh, we are all different and, and the variety is, is very important to have. And, and what bothers me uh, a lot is that uh, when, when I look at this, there, there are so many, what I would call, invisible barriers which prevent brilliant people uh, from rising to senior positions, and a brilliant women rising to senior positions. And I think what is really important, and there it starts with, is with, uh, and I think Petra said it also, with creating this awareness. And if we are not aware of the problem, how, how do you want us to solve it? How do you want us to undertake action? So I believe it's very important to have men advocating for this gender equality. But uh, I want to be very clear also, this works in both directions. I mean, uh, I don't want to criticize this forum, but I would have had appreciated maybe one more man in the panel would be good. I am uh, uh, also a, a gender champion of the United Nations, and we have one obligation, is that we cannot participate in panels if not at least the, the, the two genders are represented. Now I'm lucky I'm the only one, but uh, <laughs> you understand that it's uh, borderline. But I think this is really important, uh, what Petra also said and the other panelists. I mean, we need not to do this, or you don't need to do this as women. We need to do this together as a society. And you know always, like in these situations, the best advocate, for women are not women. I think they are men. So I think you need to involve them. You need to create this awareness also in your organization. It uh, took quite some time before everybody got aware of it. We had to organize many panels. But the biggest problem now for the moment is with the national federations because they have not that awareness. And in many positions in international federations, people get there because they are proposed by national federations. And if national federations do not uh, embrace gender equality, you will always see the same gender coming up for elections. And this is uh, something we need to do from grassroots to the top. But awareness is really the key thing and, and really doing something. And quota, I don't believe in quota. I believe in, in convincing people that this is the right thing to do. Thank you very much, Ingmar. Actually, you just gave me the perfect words to close a bridge between the starting point and ending this first part of our discussion. Um, yes, we have to create more awareness. So I would uh, like to repeat and to, uh, to invite all of you to take part in this Women's Month uh, we have created with, together with the ITTF group. And Pose yourself and advocate for more gender equality in table tennis and in sport in general. We have, for example, our Femme Pose campaign where you can share your picture with a strong pose and share it on your social media. Invite others to do the same and show our common goal of achieving more gender equality or of achieving gender equality in table tennis. And this is, of course, not to limit, uh, limited to girls and women. This is open to all. And we really need to address everybody all together, the issue of gender equality. I'd really like to keep discussing about um, the imbalance, but I think our time is running too fast today again. Um, so I would like to make a break here and um, to start with the second part of the, our discussion, where we would like to see more the solutions before we start with this, um, there is a new poll open now in our mentee tool, which is, I hope, active. So you can still uh, go back to our Blue Jeans chat function. My colleague will, uh, will post there the same link. You just click on it. It's the same link we used before. And I'd like to ask you to answer the following question with our mentee tool. The question is, in your opinion, what measures can be taken to increase, uh, to increase gender equality in sport or in table tennis? 
So please go to the Mentee tool again and let us know what measures you think shall be and can be taken to increase gender equality in table tennis. Thank you very much. I hope that all of you are going to participate. At the moment, I still cannot see any results, but I'm pretty sure you're all very busy typing. And while you're typing, I'd like to keep going with the conference. Um, Please answer anyway, the poll will be open for several more minutes. And as again, as I said in the beginning, this tool of the polls really helps us to understand you and to understand what you think about um, what measures can be taken. So we will take them into account even after the conference to keep working with it. Petra, where do you see the benefits of gender equality within the ITTF. If we reach a status of complete gender equality, where do you see the benefits? Thank you. Uh, gender equality is good for everyone. The goal now is to keep promoting gender equality while replacing old systems based on outdated mindsets. The lack of gender equality in ITTF could also be seen as a missed opportunity or a positive potential. We heard it before from both Ingmar and Rita uh, regarding diversity. Diversity of today's table tennis sector is needed to attract potential table tennis players and to keep them as members active in the table tennis family, ready to fulfill activities and functions. Quality. Quality of the service delivered as women will provide different role models, role models for both girls and boys. And also, uh, gender-friendly coaching may decrease the high drop of uh, out rate of girls and women and create a more positive and social educational climate for all. Finally, it should be strongly stressed that gender equality in table tennis will be economically beneficial for all stakeholders in table tennis and related industries, including media, because of higher participation and popularity of table tennis and a growing workforce. As a conclusion, research and development in sport have shown that a more comprehensive understanding of the value of gender equality is a condition for social and economic progress. So we cannot stay without uh, diversity and we can also see as, as very many of you know, I'm also vice president finance. I can also see that we cannot afford financially not to be more uh, diverse. So that's my comments for now. Thanks, Ipke. Thank you very much, P uh, Petra. So understand if we have more diversity, this will lead automatically to more quality too, which is always, of course, very much, uh, very much uh, needed everywhere. I'd like to give the question back to, uh, to, to Monica. Monica, you are empowering girls on a daily basis within uh, the program Impact on the Vidas, and you have been empowered yourself thanks to table tennis. What do you think? How can playing table tennis empower women and girls and affect their personal and professional life? Monica? We would like to hear your opinion, but we can't still hear you. Let's no, it's it's working. Okay, it's working. you can go on. Okay, the main objectives of Impactando Vidas are mainly five. Um, one is a relevant to the sustainable quality education Peruvian children in need through table tennis. The second one uh, goes to reduction of inequalities by going to public schools instead of private schools. Uh, the third one is wellness and health with the practice of table tennis, which has been scientifically proven with the sport that, that most develops the brain. The fourth one is gender equality by giving boys and girls exactly the same opportunities of development. The fifth one is the strategic alliance in bridges in between um, government and private companies. Well, uh, gender equality is linked to the development and is vital to the realization of human rights for all. And the overall objective of gender equality is a society in which both women and men enjoy the same opportunities 
rights and obligation, including sports. We Done. cannot hear you. you now we can hear you back. I'm done. Did you hear me? Yes. Did you hear me while, so, while I was speaking? At the very end, I, I didn't hear you, but um, I think you were done, right? <laughs> Yes, I'm done. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you very much for your contribution, uh, Monica. Indeed, really interesting to have all this experience from the field and um, how people work on a daily basis to create more gender equalities with the future generation. I have here a, a question coming in from the Q&A section, which I really would like to pose to you. There is Sergei Litsin, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your name, asking or saying, that is great when high-ranked men like Ingmar are advocating for gender equality and equity in sport. What, what can be done by minor male staff of sport organizations to promote these values and affect women's careers positively and to change the attitude? Rita, maybe you can answer to this question. I will repeat it to you because sometimes it's difficult to get it at once. What can be done by minor male staff of sport organizations to promote these values and affect women's careers positively and to change the attitude? We would really like to hear your opinion on this, Rita. Yeah, I think it's so important that um, men and women also on that um, a lower level or minor level work together and I think there it's probably more easy to interact as coaches with athletes and so on so that they better understand each other but what I believe uh, and it's a bit related to what is said before we should interact more about this topic and not only on practical level as a coach with athletes or a referee with uh, a male referee with female uh, athletes or, or whatever but we should really talk about these things and interact and have uh, workshops together or uh, discussions together about it so i think that would help to better understand each other and also recognize the the, the differences and also the uh, the strength of each other and I think if that understanding, and that is also uh, awareness, I would say, on the lower level is more normal, if I might, might say it this way, then it would probably help also to, to the next levels to do that. So that's actually what we try to do with our programs if we do this kind of workshops or development programs, or, for example, to, uh, to increase the organizational capacity of our national Paralympic committees, that we always invite men and women. So they work together on this uh, to increase the next level. So it's not, uh, it's really an obligation when we all host these kind of events that, that uh, they bring men and women uh, at the same time. I hope that answers a bit of your question. I think Sergei will let us know if not, but I really think you, uh, you did well. Uh, Rita, thank you very much for your answer. I'd like to invite you to Ingmar. Is Sergei um, has asked about your comment. What do you think can be done by minor male, minor male staff or sport organizations to promote these values and affect women's careers positively and to change the attitude? I'd really like to hear you, Ingmar, on this point too. Well, thank you very much, and thank you, Sergey, for for the question. But I must say, I don't like uh, high and lower. And, uh, there, there should be no distinction. I mean, uh, uh, I believe it's important that there is a kind of a cultural shift that all men, and whatever high, middle, lower. I I I don't like this terminology, but uh, there should be a mindset. Uh, and, and it's in both sexes that they have respect for each other and on top of that also for other form of uh, gender diversity people should it, it's a, it's a basic fundamental i would say democratic right i mean uh, people should uh, make no distinction people should uh, consider and treat each other equally and uh, 
one of the important tools because we know that the situation is not the same in all parts of the world. There are cultural differences, uh, but education is so important for it. And I believe that, uh, for instance, if we as international federations, we are developing uh, development programs for our sport, a very important aspect of it is promoting gender equality. And it's only when we do that uh, at the grassroots level that it will filter down and that it will be successful faster. Uh, that, that's really important. And, and I'm, by the way, I'm very happy to see from the, the chat that I have already a club of men that are uh, wanting to join, join me as ambassadors for gender equality. So thank you very much. Thank you. So thank you very, uh, very much. This is very aligned to uh, what you said before. We have to create more awareness and um, this will change, of course, the mindset. And of course, this will change the mindset for future gener generations too. I'd like to come back to you, Funke, now. Um, as by your exper experience, are there any measures you would love to see to address better gender equality in sports organizations? particularly if we think about the relation to the low representation of women in decision-making roles again, do you think there are any measures which should be added to the existing ones? Do, the, do you think there are any very interesting measures we should advocate more for? We can't hear you. We need to switch on your phone, so it's a great opportunity oh yeah God. now we have oh, thank you for <laughs> really it is kind of complicated you know for example i'm from africa and most of the times it baffles me that every time i go for an international competition that's when i get to see all the board and majority most of the time i only see men and for example in africa and table tennis board i think we have only one female and I, I really don't like it, but there's nothing I can do as an athlete, you know? Maybe there should be a law or something that, okay, like in Africa, there should be like 20% or 30% of, fe of, of, of female on the board because we can't continue like this. Sometimes, you know, it's not every time that an athlete wants to talk to, for, to a male. I want, sometimes I want to talk to somebody that will understand me as a woman. I want to talk to a woman like me. But unfortunately, like I said, in Africa, we have only one female on the on the board of, of, of Africa. To me, it's unbelievable. And the same thing, maybe they should do the same thing in ITTF too. You know, I've been representing my country for the past 30 years. Maybe I'm even going to see um, a vice president that's going to be a female. I don't know if there has been something like that before, you know. But I will be happy that we can have females. You know, we women, we are strong. We are multitaskers. We can do a lot of things. They should just try us. Let us see. Let us let them make that law. Because if I, I believe if they can't, if they don't make that law, the the the, the male will continue. We continue like that. You know, because I think in sports it's, it's, it's like a male male's world. You know, something has to change. You know, we are strong. I want to see female. I want to see more female team in coaching. You know, Tango, like I live in Germany. Tango, we have a male coach for the males. We have a female coach for the females. You know, I want to see that too. I want to see women doing something great. I'm, I'm really, I'm so, I'm not a feminist, but I just believe that we, we women too, we can do a lot of things. So I want to really see, you know, women, women taking the top, the top job, the top pose, you know, and the only way I can see right now that we can do it, it just be like, okay, on the board of ITTF or on the board of ATTF or other, other, other continent, we should at least have 20% or 30%. If they can do that, I will be happy. I know it's going to be hard work. They can do it, actually. Thank you very... Oh, we can't hear you. I'll finish. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, okay. Because you kept um, speak, uh, moving your hands, I thought you haven't. Thank you very much, Funke. I'd like to use this opportunity to open a new poll. Funke told us that um, she thinks there should be at least 20% of females within the ITTF executive board. What do you think? We will now open a poll within the poll function in blue jeans. 
And the question here is, what do you think of gender quotas? Do you think it is a contributor or do you think it's a blockage? Please answer now. Thank you very much. We have 67% of people disagreeing with you, Funke. They say gender quotas are a blockage, but still 33% of, per of uh, our attendees say it's a contributor. Thank you very much. But I still like to come back to one of the points you, you mentioned too, Funke. You talked about a lot of qualities and characteristics women have. Petra, what do you think? I, th I know this is a very difficult uh, question and I don't want to go into prejudices, but what do you think? Are there any characteristics of women you may see in increasing their chances in being successful or rather reaching a decision-making position? Thank you. Actually, I have been reading a lot to understand this matter. And finally, I found a study made by a consultant firm Assessio in as late actually as March 2020. From this study was data from more than 200,000 individuals collected and skills compared. The result of the, this study showed no difference between male and female behaviors and skills to take on a decision making position. Actually, only one area was different, and it was social skills. And yes, female candidates was higher in 18.5% of the cases. I don't know if social skills is, is needed or not. I'm just saying that was the only difference. Very often in these discussions is mentioned the lack of women with competence. This is, according to the study, a mistake, the biggest mistake. As we tend to measure competence in a wrong way, as we very often say that competence is equal to education and experience instead of looking into what is crucial for the position. To conclude, we have to create professional measures to select from instead of using traditions and which is often personal network as well. My personal reflections on this is that very many of my female friends look into a potential position with much bigger respect than my male friends. And this is also where I believe we as role models can play a positive role and encourage females to challenge themselves even more. Thank you. Thank you very much, Petra. We have an interesting question coming in from the Q&A section um, talking about awareness to uh, two. I'd like to give this question to you, Ingmar, again. Um, Petra said at the beginning that we need to move from awareness to change, which was a really interesting fact and a really interesting point of view. What do you, Ingmar, think about positive discrimination, at least on the earlier stages, until an international federation has a reasonable gender balance? What do you think about positive discrimination? I'd like to hear, or we all like to hear, Ingmar. Yes, th thank you very much for the question, and it's a very interesting question. But the uh, first question we need to answer is what is what is the definition of positive discrimination? Uh, when it comes to quota, I, I'm not a big fan of uh, exact quota like 50-50, because uh, I think uh, it's sometimes difficult to achieve, and we need also to look at the, the quality of people. But you can have uh, uh, also... And, and when I say quality of people, it means in both directions. Eh? Uh, would be uh, not a good idea because there is a 50-50 and you have the 51 uh, uh, women uh, who is more capable and you need to refuse it uh, because uh, you are already over quota. So it goes in both directions. So I think it's very dangerous. But you can uh, create uh, some other incentives uh, to do it. For instance, when, when we, in our organization, when we talk about our board, there, there is a nominations committee, there, there is an assessment of the candidates, and this is not only for positions in the board, it's for positions in committees. And there we, we have a very clear recommendation that if there are several candidates that we consider equal in, in quality, then, and then we will, as a board, doing the appointments, we will appoint uh, the, the, the candidate of the gender which is uh, underrepresented in that body. And that is, I think, a very a very good tool because it also looks at the, 
at, at the quality uh, of the people. In the, in the end, we want to have the best candidates and the best people in all the positions. Uh, so this is a, a, a way how you can correct it. Uh, we, I, I fully agree with the fact you should not only speak about it, uh, but you should also really do something about it. And that's why, for instance, in our development programs, I insisted and we created now a kind of a, a purse where we are uh, uh, financing projects on gender equality that promote gender equality in developing nations. And we see that this is really something that picks up and that then also changes the, the, the gender balance within the organization of the National Federation, and that's where it starts. So I think there are a lot of incentives, but I'm not for a really the 50-50. I don't think that's a good idea. Uh, but maybe people can differ of opinion, of course. Thank you very much, Ingmar. Yes, of course, um, that's diversity, um, which makes us all stronger, and we can all have uh, different opinions. I am really happy because the Q&A section is getting more and more active and more and more very interesting questions are coming in. I have a new question now for Rita. Rita, how possible and easy is it to change the constitutions in all sports federation and higher sports, we have the word higher again, and higher sports organizations in the benefit of and empowerment of women or persons with disabilities? Yeah, thank you. This is also a very interesting question. And I think that is really complicated, as I said already. You know, paper, we can change it on paper, but uh, it's not only the, the procedures or the legislation or whatever on paper. We try now, we are as International Paralympic Committee at the moment in a, in a governance review. And as I'm also the chair of IPC's Women in Sport Committee, I was very happy to see that governance review coming because we had as a committee uh, high expectations on the opportunities now to change uh, the legislation and make some obligations and so on. So we, in the first draft of that governance review, with which we were discussing with our membership, there was a strong pushback from the national organizations to have this strong obligation. I can't hear you, Rita, can you? Hear me? Yes, now we can hear you. Sorry, can you repeat the last sen two sentences, more or less? So we, we recognized by, um, by discussing this draft, our national member organization, that there was a huge pushback from these obligations. And they said, this, this step is too big for us, because we cannot control on national level for, uh, if we have a board on, you know, which is... We really took it back and we made it um, not an obligation anymore, but we will uh, come with stronger recommendations uh, to, to, well, to work towards gender equality. But what we need is uh, research and also to report on the numbers, because that is what, what is lacking at the moment. We should really, I think every second year, we should uh, show what the differences are and if there are any uh, positive steps towards that. So it's not only on paper, but as Ingmar also said, we really have to do things. And that is, well, I, I hope I get another opportunity to say a bit about that, but there are also other possibilities to really do things. Thank you very much, Rita. I hope you get the opportunity because our time is almost over. We have only 15 minutes left, but I'm pretty sure that um, that somehow we can follow up and we can do a next conference about this and talk about all the unanswered questions. I have another question. I would like really like to give um, the opportunity to our audience to ask their questions and um, interact in this way with all of you. The next question coming from our audience is uh, to Funky. Funky, some elite players feel 
that they are experiencing discrimination, inequality, but they are too scared to speak out because of the fear they will be dropped from the performance team. What advice would you give to these players? Wow, yeah, um, so these players have been in your shoes. And um, yeah, what I normally tell people right now is that you must try because it's just like this is your dream and um, some people are trying to take your dream away from you. When, if you talk, you're going to be dropped. If you don't talk, you're going to be hot, you know. I've been there. I know how it is to feel. I, there, were, there were lots of times I wanted to talk, but I couldn't talk. But now, maybe because I'm older, I will talk. But I will talk in a way that I will not actually mention names. So I will advise you for you to free your mind. You don't need to mention anybody's name. Just speak out. Speaking out is going to help you. You understand? But if you know that, I'm so sorry, I have to be very, very realistic right now. If you know that you are strong enough, you know, not to talk for some time so that you can achieve your dream, then you don't have to. Because where I come from, I don't know, maybe it's different from Europe. I, you know, I have to talk about Africa, where I come from. If you talk, they will take away your dream from you. That is why most of the time people don't talk, you know. And most of the time, they, they, they later on talk in life, maybe they are, have actually um, retired because it is hard and it is a very hard situation. And I'm really shaking because I've been there. I really, it's, it's a difficult situation that sometimes you don't really know how to advise people. But please, it depends on you. If you can talk, please talk because talking is going to help so many people like me that I spoke out, it helped me. Even though they hurt me more, I cried for some time, but I got up again. So if you can talk, talk please, because it's gonna help you, it's gonna help so many people. And believe me, one thing, one thing I know for sure is that what will be, will be. If you are destined to get to somewhere, nobody can stop you. There might be a lot of obstacles on the way, but don't give up. Keep climbing it. You will surely get there. Be focused. Be determined. Be dedicated. And no matter what comes my way, I'm going to get there. And be you. Don't be anybody. Don't be me. Just be real you. And you surely talk. You surely get there. So if you want to talk, talk. If you're not strong enough, please. Shh. Thank you. Thank you very much, Funke, for your impacting testimonial. Um, I have a comment here that um, Ms. Hajira Kaji, our Gender Commissioner, would like to comment. Hajira, the floor is yours. Please feel yes, free to thank, comment. Thank now. you very much, Patricia. Uh, I think in, in partnership with our male partners, I'll call them, um, Igma and this, I want to ask for for, for further conversations on this matter, that I think we as women, what we are saying is we want to benefit because in the background, women does a lot of work to keep the organization going, whether it's a secretary or a post box or whatever. So we want to be at macro level. We want to be free of discrimination at all levels. And this I want to appeal to all the girls and women that we need to fight for that. And Funke, I think we need to speak up when we're not happy. It's very important that we not be afraid and that we don't hold back. If we're not happy, talk about it, engage. The, our partners, the men, will support us. So we want to be free of all discrimination, whether it be economic, whether it be at a leadership level, wherever. I think that is what we women should be striving for, and that is what we should be uh, achieving in our, our careers. Thank you, Rutka. That's all I want to say. Thank you very much, Hajira. That was very interesting. Um, well, we have thousands of more interesting questions, and I'm really appreciating the interaction also. I can see here in the events chat. Um, please feel free to interact there. 
Before we will get some closing remarks from our directors, uh, Leandro Olvich, ITTF Foundation Director, and Polana Seovin, ITTF High Performance and Development Director. Because before we get these um, summary remarks, I would like to invite all of you to give one statement to inspire our community and to inspire our our audience. After this really interesting discussion, what would you like to tell our audience? Just in one sentence, and um, I'd like you to start, Ingmar, maybe, and then make the round. Ingmar, uh, Rita, Petra, Punke, and Monica, how would you like to inspire our audience on the fight and the way to achieve more gender equality? Well, it's maybe as a reaction to what the uh, Punka said, and, and also Hajira, I really would uh, like to say and invite you, speak up. It's really important. If your organization is not capable to deal with that, then you have a problem in your organization. And maybe by speaking up, the problem will become manifest. Uh, I can refer uh, to what recently happened with the organizing committee of the Olympic Games, where the chair of uh, the organizing committee did uh, some very bad uh, speeches. And you see the result is there. Now you have a female chair of the organizing committee and perfect gender equality in the organizing uh, committee structure. So it works. Speaking up works. So do it. That's my advice. Thank you very much, Ingmar. Rita, what is your inspiration? What is your advice, your statement? <clears throat> I really want to encourage the strong females we have already in this meeting, but also to encourage other females to step up. As we, as IPC board, we are we have we will have elections this year, and I'm reaching out to different potential female leaders I see to talk with them. Have you ever thought of stepping up in this kind of position? So it's so important because everyone I reached out to said. Oh, you think about me? I never thought I could do it. So really, we should help each other as female leaders, and especially the ones who are already in a higher position, if I might say higher. <laughs> Please do so. Thank you very much. Petra, what is, what is your inspiration, your motivation, your statement? Thank you. I was very inspired by both Ingmar saying speak up and Rita say step up. I mean, it's all about making this together and help each other. Actually, my favorite quote I would like to share with you, it's Kofi Annan actually saying that it is true that gender equality is more than a goal in itself. It is a precondition for meeting the challenge of reducing poverty, promoting sustainable development and building good governance. So that will be my final words from Kofi Annan. And also, I'd like to say also thank you all for listening and happy Women's Day to all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Monica. Very true words from Kofi Annan. Monica, what is your final statement after this conference? How can you motivate others to fight for more gender equality? We can't hear you, Monica. You have to restart again. Well, yes. Now we can hear you. We can't. Oh, no, we can. men and boys. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Gender equality should concern both men and boys and has a strong impact on our daily lives. Therefore, it is very, very important to engage more men in standing for gender equality, but this is the way to bridge our, to bridge about change. And then you have to empower all women, empower your daughter, empower your wife, empower your mother, empower your sister, empower every, every girl is there born. Thank you very much, Monica. And last statement for today, uh, Funke, what have you to say to our audience? How would you like to inspire it? And what do you want to tell them? It's your last statement for today. Female, um, 
No matter what the world is throwing at you, no matter what you might be going through right now, just don't give up. I never gave up. For me to be here today smiling, <laughs> it's by his grace. So no matter what, don't give up. Just keep on keeping on. You're going to get there. I'm talking about speaking up. Yeah, do. Please speak up. But please go to the right person. Go to somebody that will fight for you. Like I said, I'm an African woman. I know how it is to speak up. Do speak up if you can, but please go to the right person. And to my African people, I'm ready to listen to you. I'm ready to talk to, talk to you. I'm ready to help you. I'm ready to share some of my experience with you. So anytime you need me, talk to me and you will surely get help. Thank you all on happy International Women's Day. Thank you very much, Funke. I would like now to give this word to Leandro Olvich and Polona Tseowin, who are live in Doha at the World Table Tennis Contender at the moment to summarize and to recap on this very interesting discussion we had. Thanks, Big Pia, and thanks to all the, the panelists for, for taking part of this, this conference. We are very proud of, of this. I'm here together with my colleague, Polona. And as we are International Table Tennis Federation, we'll play a little bit of ping pong and speak a, a bit, each of us. You can see behind us, we are playing World Table Tennis. And it's a real pleasure for us because during this day, we can see on the banners how the people is um, um, commemorating the International Women's Day. And today, only women uh, are playing to portray and to give more more importance to them. I can tell you that this this started as a, as an idea of our staff to uh, to uh, celebrate the World Table Tennis Day on April 6 with the motto of empowerment. This was a kind of uh, snowball and started to uh, cascade uh, more events and more empowering the the, the women. Uh, for me, it was really interesting the concept of embrace diversity as a strength that was mentioned by, by Ingmar and also by, by, by Rita. And we can see in this panel of discussion that, that there was a diversity in terms of nationalities and regions where they are coming, but also of your, your field of, of interest. We have decision makers, we have players, we have practitioners on the field using table tennis, or using other other sports, there we can see the the, the strengths and the diversity. Now I serve to Polona. Smash. Thank you, Leandro. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. First of all, thank you to the awesome guests to host today, uh, and thank you very much for your insightful, inspiring very motiva motivational contribution to the conference of today. So there have been really many takeaways. Leandro and I have been taking notes thoroughly, and I would start with the critical areas that were identified and that probably needs to be addressed in a special way, which is the media and how girls and women are portrayed, the media revenues at all levels, um, including incomes of our female players and leadership and decision-making bodies, which, um, as Ingmar said, there seem to be also some invisible barriers, and hopefully through time we will be able to address them and provide opportunities so that we will have in the future more female leaders. Thank you, Polona. Yeah, also I would like to mention the, the, the comments from, from Petra. Awareness is, is there and we need stronger follow-up. We went already through the awareness and it's increasing. Also, also Ingmar mentioned that decades ago the, the women were not even able to participate in, in question competitions. Now it's something that we couldn't even think. So there is a progress, there is now the awareness, and it's the time to come from the awareness to take to take actions. They were different in the in the menu, different uh, possibilities. I saw that uh, giving quotas to the women, some people, most of the people was in, in, in favor. Um, 
mentorships could be another uh, possibility, but also going into action like campaigns to, uh, to continue with awareness. But this is important to take different approach in you know, all different areas. And what was mentioned, that this is not only a question of women and, and girls, that the most important is to, uh, to work together with the men and with the boys. It is important to start at national, at grassroots level, because member associations need to embrace the cause. As starting at this level is the only way to make a difference tomorrow on the top international level. I would say, I think we are close to, to the end. I will say my final words and then give Polona the last ones. I think this should go more, more beyond, beyond sport. And the, as a foundation, we, all, we always see the sport as a tool for, for a, social, a positive social change. For me, even more important than, than, than to see the, the gender equality in sport and equal rights, I think it's even more important in the society in general. We should use the power of the sport to give more, more relevance and to, uh, to, to promote this, this concept, not only in sport and everywhere. And the best way to start the change is not only in our sport or our organization, it's ourselves. And next time we, 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 took, we take any action that could, be, that could be improved, that we keep thinking about the, the gender equality and equal rights to finish with the, with the patriarchy. Thanks everyone for, for your presence, sending this especially to the, to the panelists and to our staff behind the scenes. Like, yep, to give the final words to Polona. Thank you, Leandro. So, engage, speak up and step up. Be focused, be strong, be determined and be you. And let's fan power all year long, not only on 8th of March. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Polona and uh, Leandro. Before you go away, can you please stand up and show our audience the very nice T-shirts you're wearing today? With pleasure. Yes, here we are. This is our, these are our 2021 World Table Tennis Day T-shirts. Perfect moment to create more awareness for women and girls all around the world and to include more female players into table tennis. I'd like to express my gratitude too to all of you who took part in this stuff behind the scenes and of course our panelists. It was an honor to have you here. I would love to keep discussing and to hear more opinions and I think it was really fruitful. So thank you all for your for this amazing conference. We will finish it now showing again the video we showed at the beginning where you can see some very strong players pronouncing their words for more empowerment. Thank you. Be yourself. It's your power. It's time to roll up our sleeves. Be yourself. That's your power. Juntos podemos. It's all about gender equality. Together we can. We can. Be yourself. It's your power. Juntos podemos. Universal, popular, inclusive, fame, harm. Uh, for me, table tennis inclusion are hand in hand. Um, this is a sport that has no barriers to entry. Anybody can play, and that's how it should be. We should get as many different groups of people involved as possible. It's about community, togetherness. Together, in CMA. Universal, popular, inclusive, fan empowerment. Universal, popular, inclusive, fan empowerment. Join us on April the 6th for World Table Tennis Day. Join the World Table Tennis Day. Join the World Table Tennis Day. <laughs> Join the World Table Tennis Day. Blijf yourself, dat is je kracht. Get people into table tennis, guys. Inclusivity.
Sorry, sorry. <laughs> again, again. You, uh, firm power moves. All right. Fem, 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 like feminist. 